Can Susie and Bob retire with only $400,000 and no pension? Obviously, the names Susie and Bob are not theirs. I use false names to protect the innocent or guilty. Maybe they're guilty for having the absurdity thought that they can retire. Don't you know, Susie and Bob, you're going to be working in the factories till you're 95. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Yeah, let's check. Look. So I, uh, this is literally an email I got uh, from a guy. Bob's on his and, uh, and I said, it would be fun to do this on the right capital. You know what I'm saying? And let's see what we shake out with. All right, so let's go into this here. All right, so Susie and Bob, we're going to show you right now. They're making 60000 a year each. There's Susie. All right, there's Susie. And I, I should change her name because I use single Susie, but be that as me. So this is Susie Sample. All right, so she makes 60000 bucks. All right, and here's Bob. He makes uh, 60000 bucks. Now, Bob is going to retire at the end of the, let's see, Bob is, he's a little bit older than Susie. He's going to retire at the end of this year. So Bob's first full year of retirement will be in 2024. Susie, she'll work, she's a couple years younger. She'll work until she's uh, 65. So she'll work until she's on Medicare. All right. We need about $4,000 a month of day-to-day -day living expenses. That's how much money we're going to spend. Now, that does not include health care. Health care, we're going to spend about uh, about 400 bucks a month on health care because we're going to work. Uh, we're, going to have, uh, we're going to be on Susie's health care until she goes on Medicare at 65. And she, we're, going to, we're paying about 400 bucks a month for her part of the premium. Right? It's about 5,000 bucks a year. Everybody make sense? Bob will be on Medicare at some point, but Susie will still pay for her side of the health care until she's on Medicare. It'll make sense here in just a second. Not doing charitable giving. Um, where are they live? I can't remember where you stayed. They're probably here in Georgia. Let's double check. Yeah, live in Georgia. Now, this again, this is we're gonna have uh, Susie will hang up the boots at 87, will be her last day on this earth, and we'll say Bob 87 as well, just for simplicity. All right, so again, Susie will be a widow because she's a little bit younger than old Bob there. So, as you see the difference, Bob is basically five years, six years older. So, Bob, rock the cradle coming down. Coming down, coming. Rock the cradle coming down. What the hell's that? This London Bridge is coming down. Rock the cradle. What the hell's that Rock the Cradle song? Oh, man, I don't even know what to I'm going crazy. All right, so their expenses, pre time, let's say 4000 bucks a month. We're not going to have any decrease in expenses. All right, no local taxes, no fees. All right, uh, we're saving. They're not saving anything, not putting anything away. All right, so their income, again, we talked about that. Their goals right here, uh, Bob's going to retire at the end of this year. Susie will retire when she hits 65. Their health care costs, we already talked about that. Um, any other big goals? we got a vacation goal of $10,000 a year. And that will start when Susie retires. Actually, we can just even start that now if you want, but it doesn't matter. And actually, let's just start now. Let's say, they, uh, uh, let's say they start it right now. 2023, right there, 23. And we'll do it for... Uh, Let's see, Bob is, yeah, I'll do it for 10 more years. Perfect. All right, there we go. Looks all good. Um, already got, we'll get rid of that. All right, good. And this is not a real client. This is just a guy who emailed me, gave me some specs, and uh, we're wrong with it. All right, so let's go to their net worth. They got a house that's worth about 330,000 schmackaroonies. All right. And it's paid for in Georgia, and I don't know what state to live in, but we're going to say it's in Georgia. Mod, modest, moderately low property tax, moderately low homeowners insurance, nothing fancy about 300. I mean, look, $330,000 house in the old days is worth a lot of money. Nowadays, it's an average size house, man. No other way around that. It's not cheap. It's not expensive. It's just, it is. How dare you? I only live in a $250,000 house. You say my house is cheap? No. I'm saying that the median cost of a house right now is about 300000 bucks. right? They got 40... Four hundred thousand. We got Susie's four hundred one k. She has one hundred fifty thousand in it, and we're gonna put her in a portfolio of like a Wellesley type of fund. All right, we got Bob's four hundred one k. How dare he have more than she? You're discriminating against women, Josh. Yeah, and also he's older. All right, so pipe down, Piper. All right, so we got two hundred fifty thousand Bob's, one hundred fifty thousand Susie's, and Bob's is gonna be in a portfolio that's a little bit more moderate. All right, to sixty forty. We'll you know, whatever. All right, and they got 70000 bucks in cash. Everybody with me? You with me so far? All right, we, we haven't done any estate planning here. We're, uh, it's not, I, I'm not dealing with these people now, so we'll assume their estate planning is that needs to be adjusted. 
and they can take care of that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at their allocation. It's about a middle of the road, 50-50 portfolio. This does not include the cash they have. This is just their investments. I'm given a 5.1% rate of return, which is well below historical norms. And I've given them a 9% standard deviation, which is, uh, let's see, Wellesley in 2008 was down 12%. Wellesley in 2021, 22, I can't remember how much is down. Welling 10 in 2008 was down 32% of memory serves. Yeah, and then well, Wellington, and I don't know how much. Anyway, so you can see, we're basically splitting the difference between Wellesley and Wellington, essentially, and uh, we're getting similar uh, risk, 2008-ish risk. And but remember, 2008 was the worst market we've ever had when we factored inflation. 1930 and 31 didn't hold a candle to 2008, just FYI. So we're giving them 2008 risk with well below historical averages on the on the uh, increasing rate of return, on the increase rate of return. So hit retirement, see what we're shaking out. Shall we? Yes, we shall. We shall, Josh. Oh my goodness. They're not running out of money. They're leaving 555000 dollars of liquid assets to the kids. And that doesn't include their home. So let's see how we're getting this here. Let's take a gander. Let's gander away. So there's their income. Oh, that's what I forgot to say. Bob said um, he wants to work part-time right here, uh, right there. He's going to work part-time until Susie retires. He's going to get a, a part-time job, you know, shoveling crap for $25,000 a year until Susie retires. All right. And then they're going to go and off to their greater reward, uh, the sunshine. The, the, we're going to go off into the, uh, the, the sunfall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness wife's out of town i'm losing my mind i don't sleep well when the light's gone the uh the sunset they're driving off to the sunset she's a loser. you're watching a person fall apart in front of your very eyes because my wife's out of town all right so what's happening here so we got uh their income you can see in 2023 when they're both working is 135 not too shabby but they have 30,000 of taxes hmm all right, so they're they have 136 coming in. They got 98,000 going out the door. All right, because of taxes. Now you can say they're using that savings to spend, or they could use that savings to put into a, an account. They can do whatever they want, but I don't care. But you can see right here, their net flows are about 100,000 bucks a year. That makes sense. Of which consists of a pretty sizable tax hit right there, 30,000 dollars of taxes. Now, does that seem reasonable to me? It does to me. You living off 135,000 bucks. Uh, you're going to have to pay taxes, which are going to consist of what? 14000 of the feds, 8000 6000 stupid Brian Governor, Brian Kemp, Governor of Georgia, and then a 9180 9, to FICA. That's 30000 bucks in taxes. So right out of the gate, they're down to one hundred five take-home money. All right? And so that's – but they need about $98,000, which is, again, their expenses consist of 4000 a month. House is paid, property taxes, homeowners insurance. That's the only housing costs they have. Healthcare, they're spending right here. Uh, Bob's on Medicare now. So Bob's got Medicare and Susie's paying about 200 bucks a month for her uh, employment subsidized Medicare. That seems reasonable to me, man. So between their expenses, their housing, and their healthcare, it's about 60,000 bucks a year. All right, seems, makes sense to me. Now, Bob is going to go part-time right here. You can see his salary goes to $25,000 from $60,000, but he supplements that with going on Social Security. So look here. Bob now has $40,000 Social Security and $25,000 of part-time income. He's making the same amount of money he did last year. Shocking. So they still have $126,000 of income. Their expenses still about $93,000. They're netting $32,000. I mean, dude, this, I just, this isn't rocket science. That's crazy. All right, so now Susie's retired, all right? Susie's not making any money here. Bob's on Social Security. That's the only money they got. They got no pension. They got 74000 going out the door, plus they want to do some traveling, all right? So 74000 consists of right there. Their day-to-day -day living expenses, $4,000 a month adjusted with inflation. Their housing costs inflated. Now they're both on Medicare, so the Medicare health care costs are going way high. Because of, we have a uh, 500, what, about 500 bucks a month per person, 550, depending on what state you live in. Plus, we're inflating that at 5.5% a year. Now, i got to pause this real quick. All right, so we see their health care. Yeah, so the Medicare went up quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's the nature of the beast, man. So now they're living off 43000 That's from, uh, what's the name? So Bob's Social Security. That's it. They need their goal. They still want to travel. 
They still have some expenses. They got $85,000 a year going out the door. Huh, interesting. Total flows, 93000 85000 Their expenditures haven't really dropped that much now, have they? No, they have not. No, they have not. Well, let's keep rolling here. Now, now, you might say, well, Josh, they're spending more. All right, well, we'll, we can see that. We'll mess around with that. So now we got, uh, this is Susie's on Social Security. Uh, Bob's got some required distributions. They got $84,000 of income. They still got that travel goal because Bob's in his mid-70s, but that travel goal stopped shortly. They're still living on a, a lot of their brokerage and savings accounts and whatnot. Um, here's $395 of their taxes, even with a little bit of RMDs. You can see how this works, dude. I mean, literally. All right, if you're spending more than 100000 a year um, or less than 100000 bucks a year, even if you're making one sixty. Most likely you can make this work. We're just not running out of money. We go back to analysis and we can see. Now, will this be you? I don't know. But check, look at that. We're leaving the kids a half a million bucks plus a house. All right, let's make uh, let's make them spending 5,000 a month as opposed to 4,000 a month. Now that 5,000 plus healthcare cost, 5,000 plus income taxes, 5,000 plus property tax and homeowners insurance as well. Now they're 89%. <laughs> I mean, if you're 85% is a sweet spot. I want you at 75%. If I, but if you're usually, if you're spending, if you're at the 80% or less, less than 80%, that means you might need to tighten your belt at some point. If you're above 90%, that means you're not spending enough. That's all there is to it. And here's a proposed plan. So here we're spending you know, 5,000 a month, the day-to-day living expenses, their goals of travel, tax payment. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You know, their taxes are still pretty low. Look at that. Even here. Now, here's the widow's tax trap. You can see. So, their income goes down right here. Their inflows go from 144 to 104 when Bob's dead. Uh, but the taxes for old Susie jump from 5000 to 6700 bucks. That's a pretty significant tax. So, their the taxes go up by uh, 17 divided by 50. The taxes go up by 34% where their income fell from uh that's about 33 divided by 144 income fell by 23 percent the taxes went up by i forgot what i said but anyways that's a, that's a what you can see that visualized right here so yeah there'll be some room for roth conversions here oh yeah absolutely absolutely want to do some roth conversions right in there in fact what we might want to do is we might want to say well you do some roth conversions um let's go to effective tax rate though yeah right there um what we might want to do is instead of uh, let's see here because we're still on, I um, want to do some Roth conversions, tax, distributions, and we want to hit that 12%. I don't think I want to do it. Well, maybe. I mean, we got the excess money here. We got the, let's go to cash flows. Yeah, we might want to do some Roth conversions, even right here, because we have excess money. Let's do 50,000 year Roth conversions. Let's just see what that looks like. We're going to do 50,000. Distribution will take from Bob's 401k. Bob or John? I think it's Bob, right? Bob's 401k. We're gonna do some. Let's do 30,000 year of Roth conversions. We're gonna do Bob. There we go. And we're gonna start right at 2023. We're just gonna keep doing it because we don't need to worry about Obamacare. Uh, let's see what that looks like because we're Susie, Bob's gonna be on Medicare and Susie will be on her own health insurance while until she's on Medicare herself. So we don't need to worry about the Obamacare stuff. Just working with a guy today, it's like, dude, we gotta be careful on Obamacare. You don't want to lose those subsidies. All right, so let's take a look. Yeah. So the five thousand a month is a difference between these two. Five thousand a month, four thousand a month. Let's make sure we're doing Roth conversions here. Go to accounts, my cash flows. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't jump out at me. It's a huge benefit. But let's take a look for when Susie. Did. So we don't want to do it right here. We don't want to. That that that's just. Uh, that's when Susie starts taking social security. I don't know what that is. Oh, well, what is that right there? Why well, I got the big jump? I, I don't know. We don't want to have a big jump up like that. We don't. Oh, because we have the goals right there. We have, need the extra income. I'd actually, I've stopped Bob doing Roth conversions in 2028. So let's stop him in 2028. Um, 
income. No reason to do Roth conversions there. And we're going to do this until 2028. We might want to pick that up later on, but just for the time being, let's just double check. We don't want to leave Susie with a tax bond, but we also don't want to, yeah, that was pretty good right there. That might be exactly where we need to be. Let's take a gander. Let's gander on over, shall we? Let's gander. All right, let's see. We got accounts. Let's make sure we're doing net cash flows. Roth conversions of 2027. I thought I said 2028. Hey, come on. Let's go back. Income 2028. Roth conversions right there. Oh, 2026. Come on, man. I fat finger it. Like I said, my wife is gone. I'm falling apart, man. I'm falling apart. Isn't that right, Pablo? Let's take a look. Let's just look at the tax thing here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Look at it. So definitely no widow's tax trap. I mean, that's a tiny one, but she's under a 10% effective tax rate. Federal income tax bracket. Look at that. 10, just right there. 15. Oh, man, you just can't shit. And then, you know, that's a, that right there. It goes from 10 to 15 when Bob dies, but man, that's just not that big a deal. Watch the actual taxes paid. Um, let's just go back right here. So here we got income 114. And so you still got a little bit of a widow's tax trap, even with the Roth conversions. Yeah, I don't know. We'd have to, uh, you could do them right here instead of while they're working and paying more tax, you could do them right in here. Let's just mess with that a little bit. Let's, so they're not running out of money, first and foremost. That's a fact. So we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do Roth conversions not now we're gonna do them when Susie retires right there and we're gonna do it for we'll do it for ten years or so blink let's just see how that shakes out I always look at the tax thing first just to get a gauge of the visual oh yeah that looks pretty good I like that I like that level let's look effective tax rate we want to, if we can have this below ten yeah look at that oh that's nice. Yeah, there we go. That's nice, baby. Right about 10% effective tax rate. All right. And we might even want to stop Roth conversions uh, right there. Um, but for the time being, and this right here is when Susie's 71. So Bob's on RMDs right there. We probably don't want to do Roth conversions when Bob's on RMDs. That wouldn't make sense. But, you know, be as it may, uh, there's a benefit there. It reduces the widow's tax trap. It's fact. We come down here, scroll on down. We got. 103, 135,000, 108,000 of income. When uh, Bob dies, $68,000 of income. Tax will go up a couple bits, but other than that, they're gone. And they don't, oh yeah. And that's the Roth conversions right there while Bob is on RMDs. Yeah, we probably would want to stop that in 2033. We'd want to make that last Roth conversion there. And then I guess I'll close this. I'll land this plane here in just a second. What do we say in 2033? Uh, 2033, boink. We don't want to do RMDs and Roth conversions simultaneously. That doesn't make any sense. So let's go here. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. There we go. Yeah, so we got a tiny little of a tax trap here. The first couple years when uh, Susie's a widow. Not much. I mean, it's a doubling of her taxes. Don't get me wrong. It's a 50% increase, but from 3,300 to 6,200, no one's going to go scream bloody murder. Um, and then it drops back off again. So that looks pretty good, man. Um, let's just look at the visual here. Yeah, let me get that little bit of tax increase right there when Bob first dies. That looks pretty good. Look at the effective tax rate. Three, seven, eight. That's the worst case scenario, 8.8. .8. And it's going to be 10%. 10, 50, yeah, you can't beat that. Anyway, so the answer is yes, they can retire. And yes, they should do some Roth conversions. That's a fact. Uh, it'll save the widow's tax trap for Susie. And that's a big deal. Gotta get a haircut, man. First thing my wife's gonna do when she comes back is cut this mop. Call me hippie boy. Rock and roll, man. Good time rock and roll. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.